Hello class, Mr. Slusher here. Today I'm going to give you the quick and dirty uh, on uh, chapter 10-3. Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about composition and inverse functions. So, we've got, uh, let's start with composition functions. Suppose I've got a couple of functions here. f of x is 3x minus 5, g of x is square root of x. Okay, so a composition function is nothing more than uh, putting it into one function first, taking that result out, putting it into the next function. Okay, and here's, here's kind of how it goes. You'll see something written as g of f of x. Okay, so I know that I'm going to start on the inside and I'm going to work out. So here, I'm going to find f of x and then I'll take that result and put it into g of x. So suppose I'm looking for g of f of 4. Okay, so first thing again, I'm going to work inside out. So I'm going to start here with f of x. Everywhere I see an x, replace it with a 4. So I have f of 4 is equal to 3 times 4 minus 5, which we know to be 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, now I'm going to take that 7, and now I'm going to work to the outside, and I'm going to put that 7 in there into g of x. So everywhere I see an x, replace it with a 7. That gives me g of 7 is equal to square root 7. So I can say f, I'm sorry, g of f of 4 is equal to root 7. Okay? That's really all there is to it. Uh, and if I were to look for the uh, opposite of that, well, not the opposite, but suppose I were nesting that function in a different fashion. Suppose I wanted f of g of x. You can see I'd get a totally different answer. So let's take that same problem. Let's take uh, we're going to look for 4, so but remember, working inside out, so g of 4 is equal to square root of 4, which is 2, and um, I could also say um, that, well, okay. So now it's 2. Let's just keep this simple. Okay, so g of 4 is 2. Now I'm going to take that 2, and now I'm going to work towards the inside. Well, I've already done the inside. Now I'm going to work to the outside. So now I'm going to take that 2, I'm going to put it into f of x. So I'm going to look for f of 2. Everywhere I see an x, replace it with a 2. 3 times 2 minus 5. Okay. I can see that that's 6 minus 5, which is 1. Completely different answer than I got for g of f of x. So f of g of x gives me a 1. g of f of x gave me a square root of 7. Uh, so just keep in mind, nested functions or composite functions, we're working from the inside out. So we're going to start with what's on the inside, solve that, Take that answer, put it into what's on the outside, in this case, 3x minus 5, and come up with a solution. Okay, that is composition functions. Of course, uh, as you work through the problems, you may find a few other little twists and turns, uh, but it's all right there in that section, so be sure to read the section. All right, so now let's take a look at inverse functions. Okay, so let's uh, draw some nice Cartesian plane here. Call that y, we'll call that x. Okay, so now uh, what we do with inverse functions is uh, they are basically the opposite of each other in a way, and I'll show you what I mean. So graphically, let's take a look at what they are graphically. If I were to draw the line y equals x right here, 
and I took a function and I, I just graphed it. Uh, let's use, so oh, I don't know, y is equal to 2x uh, minus 2. Let's use that. y equals 2x minus 2. I know that's a line, y equals mx plus b. That's a line with a y intercept of negative 2, negative 2, and it has a slope of 2. So I could go up 1, up 2 over 1, I think. Up 2 over 1, right there. Now I can draw it better. Okay, so now I've got this line. And this line is y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, now suppose uh, I want to find an inverse. First of all, I need to find out if it has an inverse. And the way we tell that is the horizontal line test. If you can draw a horizontal line through every point of that function and it only touches once, then you can take the inverse of that function. So this is a nice line, so I can tell that it passes the horizontal line test. What if I had, say, uh, y equals x squared minus 4. y equals x squared minus 4. That's going to be a parabola, of course. Way down here, it's going to do something like this. All right. And if I were to try to do the horizontal line test, it's going to touch that function twice. It doesn't have an inverse. All right, so let's just get rid of that. We don't want that. Cannot take the inverse of that function. Okay, so I know this function, y equals 2x minus 2, has an inverse. And that inverse happens to be y equals 1 half x plus 1. Okay, and I'll tell you how to find that here in a little bit. Okay, so let's just go ahead and graph that function. Uh, I know that's a line with a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of 1. Okay, so slope of 1 half, so up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, uh, down 1 over 2. So I, I can draw this line right here. Okay, and this is the line y equals 1 half x plus 1. Okay, so now, the, the cool thing about inverses is, if you've got that line y equals x, an inverse is an exact mirror image across that line. So I can see that every point on the original function has a mirror image on the other side. And another thing that's cool, let me show you. Let's look at this point right here. That point right there is, 1, 0. Okay, so if I were to look at that same point, except let's crisscross the two numbers, 0, 1, that number will also be the mirror image on the other function. So 0, 1, think, 1, 0, think, mirror image. Okay? Okay. So that's what they look like graphically. Let me show you how to find them algebraically. Okay, uh, let's work over here. Uh, suppose uh, we have a function, and I have the function g of x is equal to x cubed plus 2. Okay, so I want to find the inverse. The inverse function, which will be uh, g to the negative 1 of x. That's how we write it. It's an inverse function. g negative 1 of x. That's not an exponent. It uh, isn't uh, 1 over g of x or anything. It's just how we write an inverse function of g of x. Okay? So, I have this function here. And let's just go ahead and call it y is equal to x cubed plus 2. Uh, interchanging the y with the g of x because uh, we do that sometimes. Now I'm, now I'm going to swap out the x and the y. Trade places. x is equal to y cubed plus 2. And now I'm going to solve for y. So 
subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me x minus 2 is equal to y cubed. And now I'm going to take the cubed root of both sides. If I take the cubed root of both sides, that gives me y is equal to, sorry, cubed root is equal to cubed root x minus 2. Okay, there's our new inverse function. And we can call that g negative 1 of x is equal to cubed root x minus 2. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the dirty lowdown on this uh, section. Uh, you may have some more problems uh, that involve slightly different twists, uh, but this should get you started. And uh, again, read the section. There's a lot of good stuff in there. So uh, there it is, 10-3, composite and inverse functions. Have a good day.